Today I will rank all of the command modules and probe cores from Kerbal Space Program into a tier list. Let's get started. Now, the first core I would like to look at is the Cube Probe Core. To me, this one is directly a G tier. G standing for garbage. Very clear, very simple. The Hexacore, in my opinion, also garbage, G tier, no doubt. Now the Octacore, also garbage. You just should completely forget about them, because even if you start the career, there is already a better core, which I like to call the Sputnik one, simply because it has just better heat protection, heat shielding, and it looks a little better, you know? So that one is an F tier for me, pretty clear. Now we have the classic Mark 1 command module. This one will be hmm, probably a C tier, because it looks good, it has some detail, you can customize it. It's very simple, you know, it will probably take you to the moon on your first journey in your career. You'll be stranded there because you forgot your fuel, send a rescue mission which will also end up stranded, and so on. Then we have the Mark II, which is very similar, carries through Kerbals, also customizable, C tier because there's just better, but you know, it will have its purpose in your career game. Then we have the Mark III module. This one is definitely an A tier because it has its own RCS thrusters. It's just larger. It looks really good. It will take you anywhere in the star system of Kerbal in the game. It has to be a solid A tier for me. Then we have the Mooner Excursion Vehicle. It's really sophisticated. It has its own RCS thrusters, but also its own liquid fuel, liquid oxygen. So in my opinion, it can really make for realistic lunar landers. So it will be a B tier for me. It looks really nice. Um, then we have the external seat. The external seat will be a B tier as well, because it's useful for very creative vehicles. Although it's kind of ugly. I mean, it's just a chair and doesn't come with any batteries, any SAS, any RCS. So you'll find yourself having to add these to your vehicles manually every time. So it's a bit here, you know, you have to know the game to really appreciate this one. Then we have the Mark 1 lander can. It's simple, let's face it, it's ugly, but you know what, it's lightweight, 600 kilograms. You will be using this one because it's cheap. I've used this a lot. It's useful. It's going to be a C tier as well. You know, it might be your first Mooner lander and it will take you everywhere when you're low on funds. Then we have the Mark 2 lander. The Mark 2 lander is a bit more elevated, a bit more expensive. It will be a B tier for me because it can transform into the rover lander and it has these little side doors where you can store your additional scientific equipment that you may want to release on the surface of the planet you're visiting. So this is definitely a B tier for me. It's just nice, it's useful also. Then we have the cupola module. It is heavy, 1.8 tons and carries only a single Kerbal. Now, why would you want this absolute monster of a brick? Well, it just looks nice. So, it's a D tier. You know, if you're building a space station and aesthetics matter, I suppose it could work. But otherwise, I just don't really play around with it much. Then we have these three modules that are inspired by the Soyuz missions. Now, they're called the P, the Onion, and I think the Pomegranate. I just don't really like them too much. They're just bland. Uh, they don't have any RCS or they're just simple and I don't know why would you want you would want to use them but they're just there so it's an E tier for me all three I don't really care too much about them then we have one of my favorites the inline mark one cockpit this is an A tier because it's simple it's sleek you can build so many fighter jets with this one and you know it's also strong enough to resist re-entry you will use this to go anywhere in space, but also just build a really cool looking aircraft. So it's an A tier, one of my favorites. The same goes for the Mark II normal airplane cockpit, because it's even sharper. Your aircraft will look even faster. I struggle to find an airplane that I could make with this cockpit that turns out ugly. It's just gorgeous. Then we can move to its not so gorgeous cousin, the inline Mark II cockpit. The reason why this is a D tier is that I just think it's a bit ugly. 
In stats, on paper, it's almost identical to the normal Mark II airplane module. It's a bit ugly, and I don't really use it that much. Then we have our first S tier. This one is the Mark III airplane module. It's really good because it's the biggest, it carries the most Kerbals, it's also the toughest, it has a really high damage resistance to, I believe, 50 meters per second, and also a very high heat tolerance, I believe 2700 Kelvin. So overall, this one will open new horizons for you. You will be able to build space shuttles and really big space planes. S tier for me, definitely. Then we have the normal Mark I airplane cockpit. This one is also a D tier. Why so low? Well, it's because it weighs 200 kilograms more than the normal, than the inline cockpit. And it also overheats a lot more, not because of any different heat tolerance, because it's the same as its cousin. But the reason being is that being on the nose, it has to take all of the atmospheric heat, while its other cousin, the Mark I inline cockpit, doesn't need to do that because it might have a fuel tank, a nose cone, an air intake to absorb most of the heat. And I found myself many times with the normal airplane Mark I cockpit overheating a lot, flying it hypersonically. So it's D tier. Then we have the remote guidance units. These will go into E tier for me. I just don't use them much. It's a bit of a niche. I suppose it would make sense if you were building a booster lander, you know, like a SpaceX style one that just lands back. It would make sense. It would look pretty smooth, pretty neat, but not my thing. Just E tier. Then we have um, the Robomax um, core. I don't really know what its name is. I use it mostly for building my smaller rovers. It can be useful. It's not that pretty. It's a bit blocky. It will be a, a bit a C tier. You know, it can be useful, obviously. Then we have the Octa 2 core. The Octa 2 core is not as garbage as its other cousins and relatives, it is actually really lightweight. Yeah, buddy! Lightweight! Only 200 kilograms, so I highly recommend it for building very nimble, very small guided rockets or, you know, small probes. It has to be a B tier for me, definitely. Then we have another remote uh, guidance unit for aircraft, unless you like building drones, you won't be using this as much, just like me, so E tier. And then the second S tier. This one is the Hexa 2 probe core. One of the biggest, one of the best, because it has the gold foil to it. Everything that your probe core would need. In my opinion, this will bring your probes to the next level. I hope you liked my tier list. If you don't agree with it, it is completely fine. You can leave down in the comments your opinion. And I will see you in another video that I'm making. It's another tier list where I'm going to list from best to worst the KSP mods that I think you should know about. Bye.